Hey everyone, this is Mike and today we're going to be combining two games I'm currently loving, Final Fantasy XIV as well as Monster Hunter World's Iceborne. With the Iceborne addition to the longsword in Monster Hunter World, we can actually do some stuff that is very resemblant of Final Fantasy XIV's Samurai, which is a job that I quite enjoy but never really get to play all too much. So to understand what we're going to be doing, we of course need to look at Final Fantasy's Samurai first, before we take it into Monster Hunter World. Now, of course, if you want to follow this build or this playstyle, know that this is just to meme or to just have some fun. The gameplay that you're going to be seeing is me trying some stuff, like trying to get this fantasy to work, I guess you could say, or this roleplay to work. Um, but it is by no means, like by no stretch of the imagination, uh, an optimal build or an optimal way to play this weapon, because it really is not. It is just to have some fun. So. With that out of the way, let's first jump into Final Fantasy XIV to see what the Samurai is all about. So when we look at Samurai, Samurai has like two main things or characteristics, I guess you could say, that define the job, which is the Kenki Gauge, which fills over time, you can spend it on some actions, but more importantly, the Sen Gauge, and this is what we are going to also take into Monster Hunter World. The way it works is very simple. Samurai has three different combos, each combo will generate a different Sen or a symbol, and then these three symbols sit very nicely on the Sen gauge, and then this immediately interacts together with your EI Jutsu. EI Jutsu is an attack that when you use it, you're going to be using one of three different moves, and what move you use depends on how many symbols you have on that Sen gauge. If you have one of them, you will do a damage over time effect, if you have two of them, you will do a cleave in front of you, and if you have three of them, you're going to be doing a very strong single target attack. Now, the cool thing about this EI Jutsu is that these are all these sheath your sword and then draw it attacks, like we can also do in Monster Hunter World now. So, let's hop back over to Monster Hunter World and see what the new addition to the long sword is. So, after you execute a move, mo can be almost any move that you do, you can sheath your sword and you can stay in this stance for about 5 seconds before you just normally sheath your sword and you can just walk around normally like you would normally do. But whilst you are sheathed, you can do one of two attacks. You can do the EI Slash, which is something that you can use to generate more sword gauge, which is actually a very good attack as well to just mix in in your normal gameplay because it allows you to go into that level up attack for your sword gauge, which I think is called the Spirit Slash, I'm not quite sure. Um, it's basically like the combo that levels up your sword gauge. So you definitely want to be using that anyways, but the other thing that we can do is the EI Spirit Slash, which will do two things. So this kind of works as Helmbreaker, where if you don't know what Helmbreaker is, it is the big move that you would use to do some damage. It's your big high hitting move, but the problem with Helmbreaker is that it requires a lot more setup than the EI Spirit Slash. Now, because Helmbreaker and Spirit, uh, EI Spirit Slash both work with the same uh, resource, because they both de-level your sword gauge, we kind of want to see which one is the strongest, of course. So Helmbreaker is stronger than the EI Spirit Slash, but the upside of the EI Slash is the fact that it is faster, it requires less setup, and it will still do pretty decent damage. But the really cool thing about it is that if you perfectly parry it to a monster's attack, you will do the uh, like the, spirit, the EI Spirit Slash, you will take no damage and you also will not de-level your sword gauge. So in normal gameplay the way you want to use it is you want to use Helmbreaker when you can, because it does more damage, but when you are able to parry a monster's attack, that's when you want to use that EI Spirit Slash, because it is going to do a lot of damage and it will not de-level your sword gauge. Of course, for the purpose of this video I try to do the, spirit, uh, the EI Spirit Slash every single time, most of the time I failed, unfortunately enough, because the timing is really tight. And then of course, where I would normally use Helmbreaker, I also use the AI Spirit Slash just to keep in this, this role-playing nature, I guess, of the gameplay that you're going to be seeing. Now, we can also do some stuff with our build that will kind of promote this gameplay as well, because the Sheath Attack actually has a, cool, uh, a couple of cool properties to it as well. So first of all, we have Quick Sheath. Quick Sheath is normally used to just stow your weapon really quickly so you can heal or something like that. But because this is a Sheath attack, sheathing the sword itself is also afflicted by the Quick Sheath stat. So we are going to get Quick Sheath 3 to make it so that we can sheath our sword a lot faster so that getting those parries out is a little bit easier as well. 
Not only that, but critical draw will also affect this draw attack, because not only do you sheath your sword, you also draw it again. So this is also going to be affected by that. Now, as you can see in the build, which I'll put on screen right now, I only have one level in critical draw, and that is just simply because I only had one of the decorations. So I couldn't get level 3 of it. But of course, the rest of the build still does plenty of damage, and I already have very high affinity anyways. But if you didn't have very high affinity, you can just run Critical Draw 3 to go even more into this fantasy of the Samurai. So that's kind of like my Monster Hunter slash Final Fantasy crossover build, I guess you could call it, for the Longsword. I've had a lot of fun playing around with this, and I definitely recommend people to try it out as well, because it's a very fun weapon. Longsword was very fun in base game as well, but it did feel a little bit incohesive, I guess you could say, whereas whenever you finish that level up combo or you did your helm, uh, helm breaker, you were kind of just sat there and couldn't really do anything, whereas right now you can just immediately cancel out of the animation, go into that sheeted stance, and then follow up with the EI slash or the EI spirit slash, depending on the situation. And then also just having another way to counter a monster's move and still keep your level of sword gauge is incredibly strong. So, very fun build. I had a lot of fun playing this, I'm going to be definitely doing some more with it. Of course, I am going to be doing the Helm Breakers from here on out again, because this was just for the video purposes, of course, but it was still very fun to play it, nevertheless. So, that's gonna be it for me, hope you enjoyed it, hope you have fun trying this build out if you do, and I'll see you in the next one.